In this video, we're going to implement a simple Ghidra script using Python. We're going to write a simple script that allows you to select data in Ghidra and then pipe that data for decoding into any external program and then automatically have Ghidra update the content of the selected memory with the decoded output of the called application. But first, the basics of scripting in Ghidra. In order to use scripting, you have to open the script manager. And here you can see all the scripts that are already existing in Ghidra. And the good thing about this is you can look up any script that you like and see how it works. The plugin that we're going to implement is very similar to the XR memory script because the XR memory script also takes a selection of data and then changes the data and writes it back into Gitra. So I will look how this plugin works. And you can see the code here. And I will use this as a sort of guideline to what functions I need to call to make my script work. Now, you may say, oh, but this is Java and we're writing our script in Python. The good thing here is that the API is the same. For example, if I want to use current program, I can just call current program and then I get obviously an object returned, but I can also call the help on current program. And calling help on things is very good because the API documentation is very good. So you now see all the different functions that you can call on the current program. And I, I will look at this later, but all you have to remember is that when you write a script, you'll just open a script that you know does something similar to what you're trying to achieve. And then you look up the documentation of the functions that it calls and see how it works. Now we're ready to actually create our own script. To this, we hit create new script, select Python, and then it will save it to the default directory, in this case, Gitra scripts. And now we'll call it pipe decoder, because we will use a process pipe to get the data from Gitra into our command process and then also a pipe to get the data back into Ghidra. So this is now the blank script. And here you can add some metadata. This is the metadata that will actually show up show up here, such as author, etc. Now the category I will put it in the same category as the XOR memory script, category is memory. And then these, this, the key binding, you can also set the key binding here, add key binding, or you can set the key binding in the code. What you can't set via the menu is the menu pass. And the menu pass is actually where in the menu your function will appear. Obviously you can run the script like this, but if you want to have your script, for example, in tools, let's put it in tools, you say tools, the dot opens up a new hierarchy. So we can put it in tools and then, for example, have another um, sub hierarchy misc in there and then pipe decoder. Then we save it, reload it enable it, and then it should be here, misc pipe decoder. We can call it, but obviously our script doesn't do anything yet. Now, when we look at the XO memory script, we see that there is a ask bytes function. And this is actually the prompt for the user. We can verify this. If we hit run script, we see that this is the window title values so with selected memory. So this is basically how you get user input. We'll now see whether this also works in Python. 
and you can use tab complete to see what functions are available. So there's an ask string, ask file, and we'll use the ask string method. Call the help on it. Then see that there are two different versions of it. The first version, you only set a title and a message. The second one, you can also give it a default value. So let's see how that works. Ask string pipe decoder. And then the default value, we will use cat. Let's see if that works. Okay. Dialog is created. Our default value is here. And you could then enter here other things that you like. For example, you want to pipe something through OpenSSL or your own written decoder function. You can then invoke it like this. Okay, then let's copy this. Place it here. This will be our command. And when we now invoke our script, it will actually pop up this window. Now let's see how we can get a selection going. So we can select something in the code and then only apply our decoder to these bytes. Basically, I'm going to copy this, but only translate it into Python. So, And I always execute this stuff to see that it really works before I copied into my script. Periodically, you want to test your script, whether it works. So you run it, and then the output of your script is actually here in the console. So if I would do a print, we see that it's outputted here. So you can use this this sort of printf debugging. So I will now not import each byte individually, but instead I try to get the whole bytes as an array. Okay, luckily there's a get bytes method. Let's see how to use that. Okay, so we give, an, give it an address and then a length. That's simple enough. So eventually ended up with this prototype implementation. It has some flaws, but we can now test it. We select the first part of here, then run our decoder. We now not going to use cat, but instead an actual decoder that I previously wrote and executed, and as you can see here, the bytes have changed. We can go back here and forth. So we see now that the code works. However, it has still some flaws, so I have to fix that up, and I will then publish the code.